Hello everyone and welcome to Fish in the Podcast where I'm trying hard to suck less at Merfolk and you're learning from my mistakes. My name is Cody. You can find me on Twitter as at NotCodySmith. And we also have Matt, my co-host. Matt, how you doing? I am doing great tonight. How are you, Cody? Doing outstanding, as always. Where can we find you on Twitter? I am at Matthew Caudill 8 By the way, my brother found our podcast. My brother does not play Magic. He knows it exists. But he calls me up randomly and says, Hey, Matt, I hear you're internet celebrity now. And I'm like, yeah, that, 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 that's a fair assessment. And he's like, <laughs> so listen to your podcast. And it's really expletive. And I'm like, yeah, I know. Cody yelled at me. So fishing f- fans out there, the F-bombs are going away. Yeah, we're going to... The only F-bombs I'm dropping are fishy. <laughs> Get it? Oh, Fish touch yeah. with F. I, I'm, I'm definitely okay with, with uh, fishy puns like that uh, and <laughs> F-bombs if you're going to be dropping fish-related F-bombs. Then that's totally fine. We can definitely those, do that. Those, those are the only F-bombs I got left in me. So uh, I actually went down to a new store this week. Uh, it's down in Norman. It's called Norman, Oklahoma. It's called Wizards Asylum. And somebody recognized me. I had I was actually sitting there re-sleeving my deck. I bought some uh, uh, these uh, blue dragon shields for my mono blue merfolk deck because I thought it'd be on flavor and, and uh, I just wanted to try them out. And uh, the guy was like, oh, you're the guy with that Donald Trump tweet. And I said, yeah, that was me. He's like, he's <laughs> like, oh, your show's funny. And I was like, oh, snap, somebody listens. <laughs> that's, that's crazy. Fish and awesome. Right. Yeah, that's fish and awesome. Um, <laughs> so if you if you like what we're doing, remember, we are on Patreon at patreon.com slash fishcastmtg. We thank all of our patrons very much for continuing to support us. That helps you know, like I, I had to drop and, and pay the, the server costs this month and, and, you know, the, just the software and, and mics and stuff and do, doing all that stuff. It, it also kind of leads to bigger and better things like maybe. And, and Matt's cheap. It doesn't pay his half on time. <laughs> well, that's, that's something that we have to work out internally. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> so, uh, you know, remember to, uh, if you can't support us on Patreon, we understand, you know, life happens and, and things happen and we, we want you to pay your bills. We want you to eat food. Um, but tell a friend, you know, rate us on whatever app store you find that all that helps us, uh, follow us on Twitter at fishcastmtg. Um, f- find us on Facebook. We're on Facebook and Instagram as at fishcastmtg. Um, we, we're everywhere. If you just, if you, like us and share us with your friends. That's payment enough. And, and interact with us on Twitter. Um, me and Cody are both fairly active. Uh, Cody more so than me. But on the weekends, I can usually um, interact a little bit more. So yeah, hit us up on Twitter. Ask us questions. Um, just shoot the shoot the fish with us. See, <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not cussing today. It's not happening. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna try and clean up this this clean up our act. I think. <laughs> Being such a narrowly focused podcast kind of precludes the audience that would be interested anyway. And if, you know, nine or 10 year old listeners are like, oh, sweet, a merfolk podcast. And then their mom hears us talking about the fish and fish and, you know, merfolk, Lord of Atlantis. Uh, <laughs> we, we don't want that. We, we want to be as inclusive as possible. So speaking of inclusivity, we're going to talk about the random merfolk card. Ooh, is it a spicy one today? Oh man, all the spice. Break out your spice rack. Because we are talking about the random merfolk number 91, which I found because I I was timing somebody's pulse at work. And for some reason it stopped at 91 on my watch. Like I I left I let it going. I left it going after I left the room. Did they survive? No, they they were fine. Their, yeah. Their pulse dropped ninety one. That doesn't sound good. No, like my, my That sounds very concerning actually. My stopwatch on my on my watch was going. And it stopped Did at you just write meh on their chart. <laughs> no, like I stopped at sixty, but my watch kept going. I mm. I stopped. It was fine. Okay. The patient was fine. But when I sat down at my computer and I looked at my, my Apple watch, I was like, Oh snap. You know, this is still going and I stopped and it was at ninety one. So I picked I I, I quickly you know searched and decked for for card number 91 and it is a doozy it's 
Oh, oh, how do we say this? Vodalian soldiers. Okay, so in all fairness, uh, Cody and I had trouble finding this card because neither of us can spell Vodalian. And we kept looking at it and we're old, so our eyes couldn't focus well enough. I think it's the, the white ink uh, with the white <laughs> border. That, that that makes it really hard to see. <laughs> they're, they're, both of us before the show kept Googling it. And it's just like, it's not showing up. I know this card exists. Yeah, well, you know, it's one of those things that we, uh, we, we, I found it, so I knew it existed. But then, like, when I, when I copy and paste it into the Google Doc show notes, like, it was just, it was, it was hard to see because, you know, we're, like, like we said, we're old. Um, so, so me and Cody being old and not being able to find the card on our card apps, respected card apps, is probably the most interesting thing about this card. Yeah. So, <laughs> Vodalian Soldiers is one in a blue. For a 1-2 creature merfolk. And the flavor text is. Vodalian rank is displayed. By the colors and patterns of their skin. Beware the color red. For this is the badge. Of the empress's favor. Corbo pearl diver. So. W- one thing that I want to po- point out there real quick. Since you did do the flavor text. Is this card has been printed in three sets. Fallen Empire, fifth edition, and sixth edition. Matt, how, how many how many how many arts are there? There are four arts. So three printings. No, there's three five sets. arts. There's there's four. Oh, is one of the Fallen Empires the same as fifth and sixth? Correct. Okay. Yeah. So there's <laughs> there's three printings and four arts. <laughs> so okay. So ironically enough, I'm in the process of building an old foggy cube. Um, which is going to be Ice Age, Mirage, Homelands, and Fallen Empire. So when Cody told me the random Merfolk today, I had a giant stack of Fallen Empire sitting right in front of me, and I actually own all four copies of the art. Um, I, I kept saying, there's more than one art, he said. And then Matt would go, no, there isn't. And I'd said, and I, I looked it up on Scryfall, and I was like, no, there was four arts in Fallen Empires. And he's like, Oh, I've got this all right here. Yep, there's there's four arts. <laughs> okay, so I use an app called Mize Eyes uh, for quick um, searching, and they're usually really good, but they d- were not up to date on their Vodalkin soldiers, and they did not have the Fallen Empires on there. But anyway, so I do have it, and you are incorrect, sir. There is actually five different flavor texts because each of the Vodalkin soldiers from Fallen Empire have their own different flavor text with their different art, which is different than the flavor text from 5th and 6th edition. Now, oh. we don't have 20 minutes for me to read the, like, the 6,000 lines of flavor text, because this is Fallen Empires. I mean, they didn't put stuff on this card because they needed flavor text space. But go out there and read it. It's, it's a giant waste of time. Don't, it's, don't read it's it. It's also the most interesting part of the card. I yeah. Think. I, I will say, like, um, the other three arts from um, Fallen Empire, except for besides the one they used to reprint t- two more times, are actually pretty cool. Um, and that's one thing. I, I mean, Fallen Empire is kind of just – it's it's a garbage set. I mean, there's there's nothing good out of it. But – oh, I take that back. High Tide's good and Goblin Grenade's good and um, the Javeliners are okay. So I'm a liar. There are some okay things out of it. But anyway um, – the art in this set is fantastic. It really is. It's just it's just all over the place and it's gothic and it just looks really cool. It's it's so different than the computerized glossy art you're getting right now. Yeah, and, and a lot of this the old art might be kind of bad compared to the new art, but it is kind of cool to see like just, you know, painted art and and a lot of it is actually very iconic. So even though it may not be like something you would buy and hang on your wall, I mean some people do. But, no, these are. I mean, these are straight up paintings. Yeah, no, that's what that's what I'm saying is like is like effort went into these and and yeah, this is pre computer generation. <laughs> yeah. So Matt, we have an interesting topic this week. I think we do. Um. So after the uh, pro tour a few weeks ago, uh, Cody and I were having this discussion. I saw a tweet. Um, and I, I'm, I'm sorry, I don't know who tweeted it out. I think it was an MTG Pro. Um, it could have been an MTG Pro retweeting it. So I, if if, you, if any of you guys know who said this tweet, let us know, and I will give credit where credit's due. But it said, with the emergence of modern humans, 
is merfolk dead and modern and i'm like ooh, now that's a topic and that's something we really do need to address because modern humans is killing the format right now yeah and i mean it honestly hasn't put up too impressive of results at the at the most recent gps but i think it was something like 25 decks at the pro tour it was a it was a pretty large chunk yeah and uh, I, and i don't have the numbers in front of me and i guess if i was prepared i i should but i, I know that the day two uh numbers were very good as well and, and and at the pro tour there were two humans decks in the top eight yeah and i've got uh andrea Mangucci's list uh he made eighth place at pro tour rivals which is nothing to scoff at um but I, i've got his list up and i know you have a list up as well yeah i i, I have the other um i have uh, javier dominguez's deck yeah, um, so which he he finished um in the the MTG, MTG top eight has him as between five five through eight, but I think he finished a little higher than that. Yeah, well, so so I mean, we both have top eight lists here, and I mean, we can kind of go over the basics. It so what one of the best things I think about this deck is it's a five color deck, but because but, but it runs like a mono color deck. In effect, it's a monocolor deck because with the addition of unclaimed territory from Rivals of Ixalan, it's basically running five, you know, three play sets of five color lands, mm -hmm. and that's pretty nuts. So essentially, what it's running uh, for the mana base is it's running this old card or older card called Ancient Ziggurat. Which it, these are all mana, by the way, so there's no convert to mana cost. But it's tap it and add one mana to, of any color to your mana pool. Spend this money to only play creature spells. Then it plays Cavern of Souls. I don't think we need to hit that. We all know what that does. It comes into play. You name humans, so you can tap your mana for any human. And then, wait, but that's wrong. You name Merfolk with Cavern of Souls. <laughs> you name Merfolk. <laughs> if you're if you're playing Cavern of Souls correctly. You name Merfolk, but these these people are playing humans. 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 Interesting. <laughs> and then and then unclaimed territory, which is um, enters the battlefield, pick a creature type, um, tap to add a colorless, or tap to add one mana of any color to your mana pool. Spend this money to only cast creature spells of the chosen type. So it's a better ancient ziggurat, essentially. Yeah, and so then it also rounds out its mana base with four horizon canopies. Um, which is it taps for green or white, but you have to pay a life to do so. And then you can pay one and a tap and sack it to draw a card. So this kind of so helps. Yeah. It, 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 it's, it's, it's just helping draw cards. Yeah. It's fixing f for the early game, like when you need the colors, but basically later on it's, it's draw a card to get you through the dead, dead spots. Uh, two Seacrum Coast, which is a fast land that's white or blue. So, Fast lands, you know, they they always enter tapped unless you control two or fewer other lands. So this could be up to your third land untapped. Is mm -hmm. that correct? Yeah. Correct. And uh, uh, Andrea Maguchi's list also runs one planes. Uh, yeah, um, Dominguez's deck runs the same thing. And I think they're actually both very similar. Yeah, I, I think I think they're all practically identical. Um, so the the rest of the cards are creatures except for four Aether Vials, which, again... We don't even need to talk about mana cost wise because it's an artifact and everything that is in the mana base taps for uh, colorless. So well, Aether Vial, we, we all know what Aether Vial does, except for again, they're playing it wrong because they're playing humans off of it. One By other, the way, one other point. Human, I, I'm doing the air quotes with my fingers. Now, Good. now, why is human an air quote? I don't know. It just is. Now, one other thing that's important to note with Aether Vial. As with the uh, tropical Merfolk variants, is Aether Vial is kind of a source of mana, because what it does, especially in you know the more colors you run, Aether Vial is basically put into put a creature into play that's any color. So you can be off a certain color of mana, which obviously in this deck you wouldn't. Mm -hmm. But when if for some reason, let's say you did not have one of your uh, 12 mana of any color and you needed to cast something Aether Vial will get you there it yeah. kind of helps well, against fixing and, and, and for those of you who can do math we just named off 19 lands so this is a 5 color deck running 19 lands so clearly they don't give two Radio about the, the color of their cards they don't give two carps two carps oh man can we not say carps 
Well, we could just say carps. Okay. I'm sorry. Two <laughs> carps. Cody, when you go back, I want you to bleep me out. Uh, I'll 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 uh, put in the the Kid Rock radio edit uh, treatment. Yeah, appreciate that. Yeah, it's, so it's really good. So, uh, so the, the big thing about this deck, and, and the reason why it is a little bit more well positioned right now than Merfolk, is that it is a aggro tribal deck, but the disruption package from the creature base is just incredible. It is really good. So you have some creatures that pump each other up, very similar to how you lords work. Um, but then you also have creatures that come into play and completely wreak havoc across your opponent's board. One other thing that's important to note about this, and I, I'm sure it's the same, the same is true across both lists, is the mana cost stops at three. Correct. But just like Merfolk, we have... You know, in in this human humans list, there's lots of ways to to pump up power. You know, just pump up your whole team. So these these cards, being one to three mana, all have either disruption or interaction with their board, which is incredible. It, it, the deck is so fast. It really is. Um. So the the best one drop. So the best opening play with this deck is probably going to be Champion of the Parish. I agree. So Champion of, Champion of the Parish is one white for a 1-1, one, one, a human soldier, and whenever another human enters the battlefield under your control, put a 1-1 one, one counter on Champion of the Parish. So I was watching um, uh, uh, one of the Pro Tour matches. Uh, I can't remember who was playing, but Champion of the Parish by like turn four was an 8-8. Eight, eight. And so you think think about it this way. So you know how your lords in Merfolk, they are a conditional of the lord being on the battlefield. Champion of the Parish, when he gets pumped up, it's it's always there because it's counters. Yeah, and and uh and one of the two drops, Thalia's Lieutenant, does a very similar effect. Correct. So, Thalia's Lieutenant's probably the most important card in the deck, to be honest. Yeah, so Thalia's Lieutenant is one in a white for a human soldier that's a one one. And when Thali's lieutenant enters the battlefield, you put a plus one, plus one counter on each other human you control. And whenever another human enters the battlefield under your control, put a plus one, plus one counter on Thali's lieutenant. So he's kind of like Champion of the Parish, or she. I, you can't really tell from the art. I think maybe it's a he. I don't know. Do We, we need a magnifying glass. I mean, yeah. I'm going to go female. Yeah, sure. She... she uh, you know, because when she females has, can be lieutenants too, you sexist. That's not what I said. I said that I didn't know if it was a he or she. That's not sexist to, to question. I don't Cody think. doesn't think females can be lieutenants. He's a sexist. We all heard it. Yell at him on Twitter. Yep, sure. Yell at me on Twitter. That's fine. But it, it, it's basically another playset, a champion of the parish, after it pumps the team. So, yeah. I mean, you, I mean, Thali's lieutenant does cost two, but you're not playing Thali's lieutenant on turn two unless you're in a bad spot. Because there's lots of other cards you'd want to be playing. So mm -hmm. so let's go over some of the, the more early drops. Um, Noble Hierarch, four of... I mean, do we even need to discuss it? It's bread and butter and yeah. modern. Um, and then one of the other early plays that I think you always want to see is Kite Sail Freebooter, which is another Ixalan card, or I think it's Ixalan, um, is one in a black for a 1-2 human pirate with flying. And when it enters the battlefield, target opponent reveals his or her hand. You choose a non-creature, non-land card from it. Exile that card until Kite Sail Freebooter leaves the battlefield. Now, is it really important what card they take? It is. Yeah. <laughs> well, it is. But really, they're just getting information for the next card we're going to discuss, Meddling Mage. Yes, but one thing before we move on, I mean, this card is just straight gas in this deck. Um, because a lot of times, you can hit their removal with this, whether it be their Fatal Push, or their Abrupt Decay, or their Path to Exile, or something along those lines. Um, so either A, you're, for you're forcing them to play the that removal spell before you play something better, or B, you're just grabbing it if they're tapped out. So this this card is just fantastic, and it really screws up other decks. It, it's duress on steroids. Yeah. So it, 
and again, one of the big things that that we've seen in modern creatures is, or you know, modern as uh, not not modern as a format, but just kind of creatures in the last like five six years, is that creatures that do stuff, Snapcaster Mage, uh, Bob, um, the the uh, scavenging ooze, like you always have spells on creatures now, like yep. And and that's one thing that that all of these cards have is they are a human and they have some sort of effect. Yep. So, so go ahead. I know you want to talk about that metal, meddling mage. Yeah. So kite self rebooter lets you like if I were to cast kite self rebooter on you, I could see your hand, take your removal, and then next turn cast meddling mage. And meddling mage is a white and a blue for a two two. He's been errated to be a human wizard. Uh, and as meddling mage comes into play, name an online card. Not a problem, right? Like you, you, I, I haven't had a chance to look at your deck or or your hand or anything, so I'm just picking a card out of the blind, right? But the name card can't be played. So if you pair kite self rebooter with meddling mage, you get to look at their hand, take the removal, and then name their most relevant non removal card, and say you just can't play that. That's pretty darn good. Wait a second. Non land? So that means you can name a planeswalker? Planeswalkers? You you, you can creatures, you can name a creature? Enchantments? Artifacts? Wait, 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 wait. Tribal instant. Tribal it's, instant. It's yeah, it's a non land card. You can't play it. Oh my it. god. It's, it's literally so good. everything except for it's lands. So <laughs> it's so good. Yeah, no, Meddling Mage is fantastic. So Meddling Mage has been around for forever. It was actually first printed in uh, Plane Shift uh, way back when. Uh, Chris again, Pakula, uh Invitational card. Absolutely. It was one of the first, I believe, up, up there. If not the first, it's up there. Yeah, it's, it's up there. But, we're, uh, we're esteemed magic uh, historians, so make sure <laughs> to take everything we say with uh, extreme, extreme uh, seriousness. But so meddling mage is pretty dumb. Like it stops you from playing the cards that you need to play. It it, it stops you from advancing your your game state. Yeah. So another another pretty key uh, two drop. Well, I mean, most of the deck is two drops, so I guess we can't say <laughs> <laughs> um, is phantasmal image, which is sometimes used in merfolk. It, it sees some play in merfolk here and there. Um, but it, it comes into play as a copy of any creature, except it's an illusion in addition to its other types, and it gains. When this creature becomes the target of a spell or ability, sacrifice it. Now, most of these creatures that we've just named, Meddling Mage, uh, Thalia, Guardian of Thraben, Kite Sail Freebooter, um, Reflector Mage coming up here soon, uh, Mantis Rider, they're all creatures that have relevant abilities and we've basically taken your, away your ability to play your removal with the Kite Self Freebooter and the, the Meddling Mages. Right? You're correct. So the, the downside, in quotes, of Phantasmal Image is if it gets targeted, then you can't, you know, you can't do anything. It dies. But if we're getting a Kite Self Freebooter wait, 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 wait. Are you saying because of the synergy of the deck... It doesn't matter because you can't target it because there's going to be nothing to target it with. That's true. That's exactly right. You hear that? That's my mind blowing. So, <laughs> I mean, we only have a couple more cards here to talk about. Uh, I, I, I mean, in all seriousness, though, I mean, Fantastical Image gives you eight meddling mages or six meddling mages and six... Um, Kite sale freebooters. That math didn't add up. I don't think it's it's an additional four of don't, any don't, card don't, in your don't deck. Don't check the calculator. Yeah, it's 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 ridiculous, especially in a deck like this. Um, so so one card you kind of glossed over, um, is uh, Thalia, Guardian of Thraben. Um, we don't need to spend too much time on her because she is fantastic. She's been around forever, but she really really muddles up the water for everybody because she is one white and one of anything for a two one first striker. I'm not even looking this card up. I just know off the top of my head. But her real ability, besides being absolutely gorgeous, I see you, girl. I see you. Is any instant or sorcery spell costs an additional one to play. Actually, you're incorrect. It's non-creature spells cost one generic more to cast. 
I see you, girl. You're getting better. <laughs> so, so Thalia is really good against basically any deck that plays any type of non-creature spells. Thalia isn't really what we're worried about in Merfolk that much because we're honestly we're mostly running creatures, but the rest of the deck, kind of, uh, or the rest of the uh, cards in the deck, kind of do um, some serious work. Uh, and so, so I I actually did my homework today and watched a bunch of humans matches. Um, and I saw humans versus burn and Thalia and just watching Thalia laugh at the burn player as they just couldn't do anything. It was fantastic. Or the, better yet, I can't believe I forgot to mention this, watching the burn player suspend a rift bolt and then the humans player playing meddling mage saying rift bolt. <laughs> so it just stays in exile because I can't cast it. I actually play this Thalia in my Mono White Soldiers Legacy deck. And we have Legacy Fire about every other week at my LGS. And it's so much fun to go Chalice on one and then Thalia. And then sit there as as my opponents go, I'm going to do this. And I go, nope. <laughs> and then I go, I'm, I'm, I'm going to cast this to do this. And I go, no. <laughs> it's, it's the best feeling. Thalia is getting printed in Masters 25. Book it. Uh, I'm I'm telling you the future right now. She's gonna get printed, reprinted. So the next card we're gonna discuss um, is is pretty aggressive actually, and and is actually a really recent card uh, in the history of Magic is uh, Mantis Rider, which is red, white, blue, or sorry, blue, red, white. I suppose for for you color pie purists. Uh, he's actually, proud to be American. I actually just he knows he's free on his Mantis. So I know some some people have been following the whole uh, green black f- vigilance flying creature thing with f- with Morrow. I actually tweeted out a green black Sarah Angel uh, on Twitter. So find that because I, I I named it the protector of the color pie or protector of the pie. I think, but but so again, this is the three color you know flying vigilance haste three three that it doesn't matter because we're running twelve lands that tap for any color plus the sea chrome coast and the planes, like we're hitting this on turn three if we need it. Yeah, and, and I mean, potentially turn two if you really want to with Noble Hierarch, but usually you want to hold it back a little bit to, to establish your board. Um, he, he he beats face. That's what he does. And, 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 and then he stays gonna, back to block. Than, yeah, he's going to be bigger than a 3-3 uh, with, with all the um, pumps that we're going to have. So he just, he's just good. He's he's He's... He's usually how you're going to be closing out games. And and f- let's not discount flying in modern. The evasion is a big deal. Yeah, it has flying, so it, it, it goes over everything. It has vigilance, so it can also stay back on D. Like, mm-hmm. this, is a, this is just a great card all around. Um, and our last card, uh, Matt, could you read Reflector Mage, please? I can, but it's not our last card. Oh, it isn't? Oh, right, yeah. The, no, we're, we <laughs> saved that last one. Uh, our second to last card. Probably our penultimate uh, card. Yeah, very very powerful card in the deck. No, penultimate, second to last. Dictionary. So anyway, Reflector Mage. One white, one blue, one of anything. Uh, it's a two three. Uh, when Reflector Mage enters the battlefield, return target creature and opponent controls to owner's hand. That creature's owner cannot cast spells with the same name as that creature until your next turn. So essentially, you play him on your turn. You bounce the card. It stay. They can't play it their next turn. Or, or your. Yeah, you you flash them with Aether Vial. Or or flash them with Aether Vial on their turn. Yeah, and then, yeah, it's just so you can't play it forever. And then, I mean, if they have multiple copies of it, they can't play the other copy either. So it just burns in their hand. Uh, and guess what? You know a card in their hand now. So if you have what a, a meddling mage, perhaps, or a phantasmal image, perhaps. Yeah, it's just Reflector Mage. He he got banned in the standard for a reason. We knew he was going to find a home in Modern somewhere. It's just what, where was it going to be? And clearly, it's in this deck. So now I know we've kind of gone over this in the course of the deck. I mean, we only talked about the main board. Um, sideboards kind of vary. Cody, you still forgot the last card. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so the last card's not, not nothing to cry home about. It's it's Kessie Malcontents. Um, it's one red, two of anything for a three one. When it enters the battlefield, it deals damage to target player equal to the number of humans you control. Now, most of the cards in this deck, actually, in the playset or the deck I'm looking at, they 
he plays play sets of every card except for one of this one. Um, and I've seen a lot of decks going this way because this can just be a finisher because usually this deck goes very wide. And if you can just play Kessie Malcontents, it can deal quickly five damage. And a modern five damage can end the game immediately. Especially with people so. taking damage off their own uh, fetches. Exactly. Um, it, 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 you know, in modern, it's not uncommon to start the game at, you know, 17, 16 life. So, you know, off of fetches and shocks. So, I mean, getting, getting five to the face is, is pretty dumb. It's just a weird bulk uncommon from Avison Restored, which is now like a legit good modern card. <laughs> Yeah, that always happens if you're if you got if you got them sitting in your bulk, make sure to make sure to crack them now, crack them out now and sell them. Yeah, well, sure. I mean, I it's I think it's TCG saying average of twenty six cents, but the foils might be moving up a little bit. That's probably more than what it was worth uh, two weeks ago. <laughs> yeah, it's true. <laughs> it was probably worth a nickel two weeks ago. Okay. So you basically just had a two hundred percent increase on your on your nickel. <laughs> so cash in. Yeah, it's no longer toddler fodder. Yeah. Definitely not. We're not handing that to our toddlers. <laughs> so now that we've gone over the main board, uh, people have varying degrees of sideboard tech, graph Dizzer's Cage, uh, Sin Collector, Gut Shot, Dismember, you know, a lot of stuff that's pretty good in modern generally, as well as a few things that are pretty good sideboard stuff for humans. Um, we, we've kind of gone over it. Like the, the, the benefit of this deck is the, the synergy of just the, all the same creature types, right? So, um, creatures like Champion of the Parish and Thalia, or sorry, uh, Thalia's Lieutenant, rather, uh, kind of all take advantage of being able to pump other humans or, or you know, interact with other humans or get big because other humans came in. And Kessig Malcontents is is a finisher based off that hum the the tribal synergy. Um, and the other thing is just all this, all the creatures have spells attached to them or just hey. super synergistic like Mantis Rider. Yeah. I mean, they're like Queen so singing Bohemian Rhapsody. They're, they're all in unison. And so we, we've gone over the strengths. I mean, this is pretty obviously a strong deck. It, it had two decks in the top eight of the Pro Tour. That's nothing to sneeze at. What what are some of the the shortcomings of this deck? Would you say it dies to Blood Moon? It it does <laughs> die to Blood Moon. It is definitely a greedy. Uh, the 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 mana base is pretty greedy. I also think I was gonna say also um uh, board wipes just annihilate it. Um your your uh, uh damnations anger your of the gods uh, anger of the gods maelstrom pulse yep. Uh, it it basically just has a, a lot of downside because its creatures are are all low low power toughness, and they're meant to interact with your hand, and they interact with each other, but they don't really interact with your creatures, right? So, kind mm -hmm. of once your creatures are in play, that's kind of it. Like they're there. Correct. So we we, we have a few areas that we can kind of work with that. I wouldn't say that Merfolk is necessarily super great at. I mean, Merfolk is good to get about getting its creatures out, right? Mm -hmm. But I mean, with uh, Reflector Mage and other cards like it, and and uh, Meddling Mage, they have ways to keep our creatures stranded in our hand, which is kind of bad. Now, 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 real quick, Cody. Now, you you said you've played this deck a few times with Merfolk. Give me story time. What was kind of your thought process, and 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 how how did the games unfold? Just the quick clip notes version. Well, so one thing that I kind of hoped for, and, and Kessig Malcontents did so much work, I'm, I'm going to say right now, um, I'm really glad that I main, I main deck um, Dismember because it allows them to keep pumping up their dudes so you can block them while they're lower, you know, like they're, they're champions of the parish. You can block them while they're small and then dismember them at a moment's notice. And even let them pump them up super high to like seven sevens or eight eights, and then dismember them, and then block. So you're so you're not like you know, uh, super behind on that end. But the other thing that I, I really liked was Copala and Kira, because they shut off Reflector Mage, unless they want to pay the extra. 
because it's the first time they get targeted or it, it makes them pay to two extra. So I think that having those uh, are really good against the five color humans deck. And I just didn't kind of see them when I played them. I, I've played the humans deck twice on Moto. I've lost once and I won once, you know, in the, 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 the whole match. Um, so one of the big things that, that can beat humans are wraths, which we don't have in Merfolk, unfortunately. Um, and the other thing is, uh, is removal, like, like spot removal. So one thing that I'm going to discuss real quick is the, what, what we side in against humans right so you're playing against humans you obviously have your mono blue list or your tropical merfolk list and so one thing that i think that comes out is uh harbinger of the tides uh harbinger of the tides is the one that bounces tapped creatures back to their hands because a lot of the times getting that letting them replay their creatures is not good yeah the the only tapped creature that you're going to want to bounce is champion of the parish other than that nothing nothing you don't want to bounce anything <laughs> um because I, mean, I mean the only other one that doesn't really do anything when it comes into play is thalia and i mean she doesn't really affect merfolk at all no so we're actually kind I of mean, okay with them playing thalia like i mean a two and first striker that gets bigger off of thalia's lieutenant is kind of scary but it's not the it's not the biggest problem in the deck but against merfolk she's probably getting boarded out yeah, oh yeah, the, I, I would say that that would be one of the first cards taken out. Um, so the other card that Merfolk wants to take out is Curse Catcher. Because, as we all know, Curse Catcher does nothing against um, humans because it's basically just all creatures. It is a 1-1 one, one Merfolk Pearl Trident that can potentially kamikaze itself for no reason. Yeah, and, and we're not about that. I mean, we, we want creatures in this matchup, but we don't want Curse Catcher. <laughs> unfortunately so what i what i generally side in is i side in gut shots I, I'm, I'm imagining corbin right now just raising his hand saying curse catcher why are you the cur worst curse catcher right now yeah why is curse catcher the worst curse catcher <laughs> so i definitely side in all three gut shots so gut shot if you don't remember is a red card and it has red phyrexian so you can pay for two life and gut shot deals one damage to target creature or player. Now this is good against Thalia. This is good against uh, Thalia's lieutenant. It's good against uh, Champion of the Parish. It kills a lot of their things. It also kills Phantasmal images. Uh, Noble Hierarch, don't forget that. Noble Hierarch. They, they, they run nineteen lands, so knocking off a Noble Hierarch if they're being uh, mana screwed is a big thing. Also, let I mean the Exalted could be a big deal. Especially if they get their champion the parish up fairly high, yeah, or 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 just multiple uh, um, hierarchs is 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 devastating. Yep. Because then once they can start, if they get a champion of the parish up to a four four or five five, and they attack as a seven seven because they have two uh, uh, hierarchs, that's 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 nuts. We There's can't... a reason why it's a sixty dollar card. Yeah, <laughs> no, it's 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 nuts. Definitely, we're. It's something that we want to keep in mind we can get rid of at pretty much any time. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing that we really want to bring in are Unified Wills. Now, Unified Will is kind of one of those ones that, that may be conditional. But honestly, we want to take the shot that we're going to be ahead of them. Because honestly, I think when you're going to game two, you're on the play. Probably. Unfortunately. Because there, you have just so many more dead draws than they do in the game one. Yeah, and, and, and it's unfortunate, but it's it's kind of a side effect that maybe when we bring in more removal, then we're getting rid of their, we're 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 getting rid of of their creatures before, and, and sticking our own, and that way we can be ahead on creatures for unified will to work. Yeah. Now, now, one thing that I saw as a potential strategy, and I and I know they have Aether Vials, so it, it might not be the, the best one, is knocking out their lands with your um, spreading seas because nineteen lands, so they're they're not going to be playing tons of multiples, but if you can turn an ancient ziggurat or a cavern of souls or whatever into a um, an island, I mean that that's really going to be shutting them down. Yeah, it helps us race, and it also it also cuts them off of like kite sail freebooter mana, um, mm -hmm. and, and it 
I mean, it ge- it gives them fixing for blue, which a lot of their deck is, unfortunately. But what it does is it, it, it also gives a silent walk so we can race. If we're keeping their creatures down and we can race them, then sometimes we can just get ahead. And that's kind of what we're hoping for uh, against this this really... Uh, I'd call it a tempo deck. I mean, it's aggressive, but yeah. it's it's very tempo oriented. And I mean, I, I I guess some options that I you know we could add, like let's say humans becomes a huge problem, right? Um, I was kind of looking at some cards like Torpor Orb, which is an artifact uh, that makes it so that when creatures enter the battlefield, it doesn't allow triggered abilities to to trigger. Um. Yeah. Trickbind, which is a instant with split second, and it's it counters uh, activated or triggered ability. Uh, Disallow, which is from from Kaladesh, which uh, counters a spell or an activated ability. So it kind of does double duty there, but it does cost three. And uh, Void Slime in Tropical Merfolk might also be something that we could kind of work in. I think maybe. Yeah, no, I agree. Um, if, if this becomes more the meta, then we can absolutely see some of that stuff um, being added to the sideboard. Now, one thing I will say, though, is in your local game stores, this deck, at least an optimized version of this deck, might not be something you see a lot because it's a very expensive deck. Cavern of Souls is a $60 card. You need a play set. Noble Hierarch is a $60 card. You need a play set. Thalia is, I think, up to 20 or 30. Um, uh, Meddling Mages are about 20 now. So, th- I mean, this is not cheap. I, I think um, it's, it's over $1,000. So this is something that, that most people, unless they have a massive collection, that if they're going to put this together, this is going to be their modern deck. So with it being a newer deck, you might not be seen that often. And the other thing is, is we're not going to devote a whole bunch of sideboard resources to just one deck, right? Like we're not, we're we're not changing our game plan. If it's something that become that continuously five O's leagues, or, or or sees a lot more GP play, then it might be something that we have to devote some sideboard tech to. But honestly, you know, this isn't the reason to to dust off your torpor orbs, is it? No, unless you have like one guy or two guys at your uh, LGS that are constantly just killing you and winning every week, then, then you start sideboarding against them. You start playing some of those hate cards. Pull, pull out your psionic blast and start blasting them with your mono blue uh, <laughs> burst. <laughs> well, I think that that's a pretty good time. Uh, uh, we kind of covered it pretty well, and we talked about what you do in Merfolk to kind of help combat the human, human menace. So, so one, one thing before before we close out, I do want to say is that we started the conversation with "Is Merfolk dead?" because humans is has taken over. Have the humans conquered the Merfolk? Uh, the answer is no, they haven't. Uh, their their foot is on the Merfolk's throat, but the Merfolk are very slippery. They're they're covered with that little fishy mucus, and they they always the the, the Merfolk deck always survives. And we we've talked about this a while. Um, one of our favorite puns, I'm even going to tell you a pun's coming, is Merfolk comes and goes in waves. Now, is this human deck going to be here to stay? Um, I've seen a lot of decks be the greatest deck ever to not be played in like a year. So, I don't know. Does it have staying power? Potentially. Uh, I, I think it personally does. But I mean, uh, De- Death Shadow kind of came and went as like the thing that was going to end modern, right? Yeah. I, it's still a good deck, but Do it's we need not... A- we need a band death shadow is it too good yeah i mean it's, it's yeah it's 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 fine it's it's fun but it, it's fair um but the, the nice thing about modern is it is such a wide playing field play what's fun play what you like and you're still going to win games with merfolk even even with this tribal deck out there now and remember, the biggest thing is to practice against it so if you come up against it don't just don't just pack up your bag Play the play out the game. See how things work out. See what's going on in your meta, and and play against it to you know get some experience going. Absolutely, the guy who plays one deck constantly and masters that single deck is going to beat the guy who shows up every week with the top deck of last week's GP. 
because you're going to know that your deck, you're going to know your draws, whereas that guy is just going off of what he saw when he watched it on Twitch. All right, and you can remember to reach us on Twitter, which is kind of the best way to contact us on Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook, really, as at FishCastMTG. Personally, I am at not Cody Smith, and that's Cody with a K. Matt, what's your Twitter? At Matthew Caudill 8. Hit me up. And if you have a longer form question, feel free to email us at fishcastmtg at gmail.com. Our cover or art. Or talk to Cody personally, just hit me up through Twitter. I'll give you his personal phone number. <laughs> Please don't. Please don't do that. <laughs> Our cover art was made by Tessa and Hunter Pruitt. Um, remember that we are on Patreon as. Uh, Fishcast MTG, your your contribution of even just a dollar a month helps uh, helps this this program continue on doing what it's doing. And if if you can't spare a dollar, remember to find us on your podcatcher app of choice and and subscribe and give us a five star rating and tell the world why you like this podcast. Or or if and we have tiers on our Patreon. If you're, there's a topic you're dying for us to talk about. Hit, hit our hit our topic tier. I think it's what five bucks. Yeah, I think two five dollars. Five dollars. Yeah, for for five bucks, we will talk about for an hour um, w- w- the exact topic you want. That's less than McDonald's fry cooks make. Yeah, that's that's a dollar twenty five an episode, less than a <laughs> coffee. I know a lot of people make that comment, but it's it's less than a coffee. Thank you so much for your time. We're we're trying to be a little bit more mindful of of your precious time. Uh, that, that you guys take out of your day to listen to us. Thank you very much. We will see you next week. Good night, everyone. Sweet. We, we were at what, 50? Uh, 47 minutes almost exactly.